The recipe I'm going to show you today is quite simple. Um, here I live on a little farm and we've got loads of chickens and therefore we've got loads of eggs. This is a great recipe for using up eggs and it's one of my wife's favourite. You can have it on its own or you can serve it with a fruit compote depending on what's available in season. Um, but I love it with strawberry compote in the summer. Um, it's called egg custard tart and the first thing I'm going to do is make the pastry. You're going to need some plain flour. There's 250 grams here, just put through a sieve. Icing sugar because that will give it a nice biscuit crust, 50 grams. A whole egg to bind and some butter. Try and buy the best butter you can, salted or unsalted, 150 grams. So flour. Um, and then the icing sugar in. And then the butter. Just cut it up into small uh, pieces. And with the tips of your fingers, don't smash it all together because you don't want too much heat into the pastry. With the tips of your fingers, you just work the flour into the butter until it becomes sort of crumb-like, large breadcrumbs it should look like. And then I'll use a whole egg to bind. That other egg over there, beaten, is um, I'm going to brush that once I've blind baked the tart to cause a seal because when you're putting a lot of cream and eggs and liquid into a tart base, you mustn't have a leak. And nobody likes a soggy bottom. So just with the tips of my fingers, get the butter into the flour and icing sugar and break it up into large crumb. And when it's come to, together, that's when I'll add the egg to bind the whole thing to, and to form the dough. Some chefs make uh, sweet pastry with caster sugar, but I find that um, is a little bit caramelized, goes a little bit caramelized when it's cooked. Icing sugar is quite delicate and gives you a nice crunchy biscuit bite when you're eating it. A nice texture to the tart. Right, so here we are, there's the crumb. Now I'm going to add one egg and then work this in to form the dough and we'll then we'll roll it up into a ball wrap it in cling film and put it in the fridge to set or rest for about um, 20 minutes, half an hour, that's fine okay, so here's the pastry roll it up into a ball and then we'll cover it with um, cling film and put it in the fridge just to rest um, 20 minutes. Uh, again, some chefs now dust a work surface and roll this out and line the pastry case and then put the whole pastry case into uh, the fridge for half an hour to set. Well, it's entirely up to you what you do, but I prefer this way. So the bore of the pastry into the clean film, make it airtight, and then into the fridge. To right, work. okay, here's the pastry. It's been in the fridge for about 20 minutes, half an hour if you want, just to cool down and set the butter a little bit. And uh, you try and keep pastry as cool as possible so it ends up um, having a lovely crumb. Um, so unwrap the pastry, lay it down on your work surface, and then we need to dust the work surface and roll out the pastry and line the tin. Now here I've got a non-stick tin, now this is 22 centimetres across. This will be enough pastry to line a 28 centimetre pie tin, but guess what? I haven't got one. So I'm going to use this and I'll have a bit of pastry left over, which I'll never waste. I just keep it in the freezer for when I make something else. So, with a rolling pin, just knock down the pastry gently to form a, um, a rough circle, turn it over. Just push it down into shape. You can 
see the lovely pieces of butter in the pastry, it's delicious. Let's push this down. Just a bit more flour. Turn it over so it doesn't stick to the surface. It's very difficult when you're rolling out pastry on wood because it does have a tendency to stick. Um, if you're fortunate enough at home to have a lovely marble, marble's always lovely and cold. Um, always roll out your pastry on a marble if you can. So we roll it out bigger than the tin, obviously. And not too thick, we don't want too much pastry. Okay. Roll the pastry around the rolling pin, lift it up, and then just roll it back out and drop it in. With your finger and thumb, press up around the sides, form a lip. there are any holes in the pastry, don't worry, use some of the trimmings to fill the hole. Press the pastry tight to the size of the tin. This is quite a high tin, but you want lots of thinning in a dish like this, so um, it is a bit tricky sometimes. Any, any holes that emerge, just fill them now, because it's quite critical that we don't have any leaks. Cut off a bit of an excess. Now you'll say, oh, well, that's very untidy, because I've got all this over the side of the the tart case, well, that's absolutely done on purpose. Because what I do is when it's set and blind baked, I trim it off when it's cooked. That way you get a lovely edge. Okay, <coughs> now for my beans, baking beans. Well, baking beans are very expensive. They're about six pounds a packet. So what I do is use some rice. And you keep using this, it doesn't cost much. So instead of six pounds, this cost, of, um, this cost about a pound. What I do is I take some grocery paper, make sure that none of the rice gets into the pastry, gets into the pastry. Carefully line the rice to protect the edge of the pastry from burning with the paper. And then I put the, be the beans or rice down into the center to keep the base nice and flat. That's the tart done. Then I go into the oven. It takes about 20 minutes. Okay, so now the tart's been blind baking in the oven for about 20 minutes. It's now time to put the egg wash inside and seal the actual pastry. Right, so here's the tart. Carefully remove the rice or your baking beans. You don't want them falling in on the pastry. Take off the grease food paper. Oh, lovely. Take off the grease food paper. And this is just one egg beaten. And I've got this brush here. And you carefully brush the egg wash over the base and round the sides of the tart to create a sort of seal. So then it goes back in to the oven for about five minutes just to create that seal so that it's all ready and prepared when we make the filling and pour the filling into the pastry. If you don't seal the tart Inevitably, it will leak. Just a nice, good layer over the pastry, and then it goes back in the oven just to form that crust and seal. Get there. Okay. So the tart's been brushed with egg wash, beaten egg and back in the oven, 190 degrees for another five minutes just to create a seal over the top of the pastry. Should be ready. Yes, and here we are. There's the pastry case. 
just put it to one side to cool while we get on for the main event which is the egg custard itself. We need about 600 grams or 600 milliliters of liquid. Um, for this particular dish I'm using single cream. If I was making a lemon tart or a caramelized orange tart I would use double cream for extra richness. But we need 400 milliliters, that's 300. Um, we need 400 milliliters of single cream and then 200 milliliters of whole milk. So 600 milliliters of milk and cream mixed into a saucepan. And then we need a vanilla pod. Now these things are quite expensive. I prefer to use a vanilla pod rather than some vanilla essence because I always think that tastes artificial. So one vanilla pod. And the thing to do about with vanilla pods is always remember that once you've split them and scraped out the seeds, I throw the pod into the milk and cream and bring it to the boil. And then after I've finished with it, the vanilla pod, I wash them in cold water, dry them on a nice clean kitchen towel, dry them on a there's the seeds. Dry them on a nice uh, green, um, clean kitchen towel and then put them in a container of sugar, or a, like a Kilmer jar with caster sugar and it always flavours the sugar with a beautiful vanilla seed even though it's been used once when you're doing your baking. Don't throw them away. Something like this costs up to two pounds. So vanilla pot in and then on the stove to boil. So the cream and the milk with the vanilla pot have come up to the boil, all the black seeds are sitting on the top. So just take out that vanilla pot, give it a wash in cold water, dry it on a cloth, and then put it in a little container like a kilner jar with sugar and it'll flavour the sugar. You can use that all the time. So for the for this um, a custard tart, I need five eggs. So it's three whole eggs and two egg yolks, just cracked into a bowl. And get rid of the egg whites. Keep the egg whites, you can always use those to make a meringue. Uh, great for um, queen of puddings or something like that. So, two whole egg yolks, three whole eggs, and 60 grams of undyed caster sugar. And just whisk this up. Make sure the sugar and the eggs are well whisked together. Make sure the milk and the cream is off the boil. If you pour it boiling into the egg yolks, you'll have, end up with scrambled eggs and the custard will not be lovely, silky and smooth. So make sure it comes off the boil. Okay, now the next thing is to pour in the cream and the milk with the vanilla seed, stirring all the time. And what you'll see now is a load of uh, surfacing bubbles on top of the custard. With a ladle or a large dessert spoon, just take off the bubbles so you have a nice smooth custard in your tart. Just pull off the air bubbles. Throw those away. <clears throat> Take your tart base and very carefully, very quickly, fill your tart with the custard. And then once the 
egg custard is right to the top. Take some nutmeg and then grate loads and loads of nutmeg over the top. Turn down the oven to 150 and this will take about 40 minutes to cook and set. What you want to do is when it's been in the oven for about 35 minutes, have a look at it. If it's set to a wobble, bring it out because as you take it out of the oven, it will carry on cooking. Um, what you don't want to do is have it too firm. So take it out when it's just set to a wobble. There you go, plenty of nutmeg, egg custard tart, now into the oven we go. Okay, um, the tart's been in the oven now at about 140, 150 degrees for about 30 minutes. Um, I'll just go and check it. Remember, it should be just with a wobble, set with a wobble. Yep, it's ready. Now, what I'm going to do now is just trim off the really dark pastry and the, get a nice edge. Any sort of discoloured pastry, anything that's uneven, just very carefully. Whilst it's still hot, take off the edge for a nice neat finish. Now, as it cools down, it'll finish cooking. You can see it's still quite wobbly and still quite flexible, but that is cooked enough. So over the next 10, 15 minutes, it will um, set quite firm. We we'll allow it to cool before we turn it out and slice it. And as I said, you can have it by its, as it is, or I love to, at this time of the year to serve it with some strawberry compote. That's just basically strawberries cooked with a little sugar and vanilla. Right, so, still a little warm. We'll cut a slice. And you can see, look, no bubbles, beautifully set, still warm. Serve this with a little fresh strawberry compote, really lovely.